So thank you everyone for being here. Um, I want to welcome you all to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting, regular business meeting. It is Tuesday, June 8th, 2021, uh, 6.30 p.m. We're meeting uh, through Zoom, hopefully one of the last times um, as we're coming to hopefully the other side of the pandemic. Um, just as we often do at the beginning of meetings, the strategic plan goals to review um, our health and well being, global competency, multiple pathways and definitions of success, safe, sustainable, and effective facilities, and environmental responsibilities. And a roll call Heather, Heather Altenberg is here, Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Uh, yay. Elizabeth Seyfries. Here. Uh, Cynthia Boltz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Here. And Laura Danino. I'm here. Great, thank you. Uh, could we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Hey, can you see it? I can see it. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the Americans of the United States of America. <laughs> and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I've done that since, I don't know, second grade, but I flubbed for the first time for a moment there. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none, uh, may I have a motion for item two, please? I move that we approve the minutes of the, I, I move that we approve the minutes of the May 11th, 2021 regular business meeting. Thank you, Kimberly. Can I have a second, please? Second. Good. Uh, thank you, Laura, I heard first. Is there any question comments? Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seyfries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Excellent. Um, are there any comments from the public on the agenda? Um, okay, uh, Susanna Mazel Hubs. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm speaking on uh, the agenda item of all the retirees tonight. Um, I'm sorry we can't meet in person to celebrate and uh, thank everybody who's on the list, but um, I feel like uh, everybody on the list of retirees has touched my children, all three children, in really important ways. Uh, maybe not Freya for the high school, but all my boys and Freya eventually. Um, and it's meant so much to me, to my, my family, my husband, my children. Um, and I wanted you to know that it's it's really uh, made a difference in their lives. And um, I wanna thank you for that. And also uh, for personal relationships I've had with uh, some of you, um, I'm really grateful from what I've learned from you in particular, Donna and Jeff. Um, I think you know both of you in your own ways have been always exactly what this town has needed, Jeff in particular for the longest amount of time. Um, it's, I, I think we're gonna be at a loss for a while <laughs> knowing, knowing how to move forward. Um, you will be greatly missed, but um, I know that your legacies that you're leaving behind are gonna help steer um, the new people in the right direction. And I just wanted to say thank you, Donna and Jeff and everybody else on the list, Deb, Ginger, Michelle, uh, Mary Page, Barbara, uh, Joan, um, you guys, you guys are amazing. So thank you very much. Thanks, Susanna. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, Wynn Phillips, you have the microphone. Thank you. Oh, you're muted. Oh, now you're unmuted. 
No, you're muted. There you go. Uh, all right. I it's, can not like you. I've, it's not like I've been doing, haven't been doing this for a while, <laughs> muting and unmuting. So anyway, I'd like to speak to the same, to the same agenda item. And uh, on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth Education Association, thank those, uh, the, the retirees, um, the teachers and administrative support people who are here in front of me on this, on this screen. I also wish uh, that we were in person because uh, you know, I'd like to shake each person's hand. I know that uh, the people that are retiring, I mean, I've been in Cape Elizabeth a long time, you know, 20 years teaching in Cape Elizabeth, and there are people uh, sitting there in front of me who have been there longer. And um, that I think speaks volumes to how much they love the school, how much they how much they love um, working there, working with the students, working with the parents, working with the administration. Um, so it's uh, I, I, I salute my hat. I think there's, um, you know, I've gotten as I've gotten older, um, you know, when I was younger, it's like retire. What does that mean? And now I, I think there's a, probably a small bit of envy in my in my um, running through my veins here. But I want to make sure that all of you know how much you've meant to all of us and to all of your students um, you've become our colleagues, you are our friends, and I want to thank you all. Um, so, and I, and, and I also want to recognize just um, Kathy Stankard, who I believe is moving on, um, and um, thank her for her work with our, our teachers and our students. Um, the, the work she has done has, um, has been incredibly valuable, and we wish her all the luck. So thank you very much. Thank you, Wynn. Are there any other comments from the public? Does, does Jen have her hand up? I do, only because I'm going oh. to say the same thing that Wynn said, only because I also want to recognize that Kathy is leaving us as well and that she's been fabulous to work with. And uh, I didn't want her to go unnoticed either. So. That was, I think everybody in the retirees, wonderful things. And Donna knows how I feel about her and I'll cry on my own tonight, but <laughs> Kathy, I'll miss you too. Thank you, Jen. Um, I have Timothy Reiniger. You have three minutes to speak. Are you there, Timothy? He needs to unmute, I think. There we are, how's that? I can hear you, thank uh, you, Timothy. Uh, thank you, Chair Altenberg and all members of the school board and all a special uh, thank you for all the retirees and your service. Uh, just a quick uh, question or request for clarification on an item regarding the DEI committee or so just that item. So certainly as you all know, and we're all seeing the stories around Cumberland, the town of Cumberland. So can I, um, before I interrupt here, Timothy, I just wanna refer that this board meeting is not meant for questions. It's meant for um, comments. So it's, it's not meant to be a back and forth. That can be done through email or other means. Um, so we might not respond to you, but if you have a three minute comment, um, I'm welcome to, uh, you're welcome to take that. I just want to clarify. I should have said that ahead of time. Oh, absolutely. Is that okay? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that was just under okay. Just gonna throw out Great. Thank you. Whoever could provide information later, that's fine. Anyway, so we're a lot of us are seeing the the controversy in Cumberland. With, you know, I'm sure we all know that about critical race theory and DEI and Marxist underpinnings and all that. And the questions have been raised: Is this happening in Cape Elizabeth? I don't think so, but there is the DEI committee. Certainly no one wants here to have a national controversy with someone on Tucker Carlson and all the other stuff. So the question for clarification would be, does our DEI program reflect critical race theory, Marxist underpinnings? And I will say I, in the past, uh, I studied abroad in college in Trier, Germany, which has the birthplace of Karl Marx. And so it's a great historic interest 
and no doubt it will go some way to on people. But it is very controversial. Or, or, Certainly, I mean, out of not wanting to see controversy in Cape Elizabeth, like in Cumberland, would ask oh. clarification from someone that the DEI really text text chat the yeah. critical race theory and Marxist under Send a graduation picture of all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the public? Okay. I'm not seeing any hands raised. So moving on with the agenda. Uh, Joey, our recent graduate, congratulations again. Joey Labrie, welcome and you have our attention. Thanks. So Ellie regrets not being able to be here. She had a playoff that moved quite suddenly. So I'm coming in and filling in for this meeting. And then, you know, I'm sorry, guys, you guys have been great, but have to go on. <laughs> so on Friday, June 11th, there'll be a, sh a showing of Napoleon Dynamite exclusively for juniors in the auditorium. So that will be a nice point of entertainment for our junior class who missed out on prom. Uh, elections for student council will be held tomorrow in order to determine the next student leaders. Uh, playoffs are happening all throughout the week. So go out and cheer for Cape whenever you can. As from what I hear, we're doing quite well. Um, there's also a summer reading book club that's starting in the high school and you should email uh, Carolyn Young for any more details. The Cape Special Olympics will also be competing on the track Thursday, June 10th at 12. So I would appreciate, I'm sure they would appreciate that the community comes out and cheers on all our special athletes. And then just briefly addressing uh, STP, I think it went quite well in a virtual and, and somewhat physical format. Although, of course, we would have preferred the two weeks opposed to the one week. And then graduation, I think we all prayed a little bit too hard for good weather because we got very good weather. <laughs> but other than that slight fact, it was a good graduation. And I appreciate all the administrators come pulling together and setting up a normal graduation during this abnormal year. And then I just want to close by saying thank you to the board for all your time and effort over the course of this year. It's been my pleasure and it's most certainly been uh, Ellie's pleasure to serve on this body for the past school year and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you, Joey. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations. Really such an amazing, you're a graduate, that's awesome. That's awesome. And it has been a pleasure having you give reports along with Ellie this year. So thank you for being here and stepping in. Next, we have presentations. And first up is the recognition of nutrition services. Um, and one of the reasons this is on the agenda is that we have, over the course of the year, recognized teachers and administrators, um, our nurses, and the guidance counseling department has had some airtime, but um, I wanted to just bring recognition to the food services that has gone above and beyond their regular call of duty um, to provide meals during the summer um, and during the school year. And it is complex. I can't even begin to explain the complexities that they've had to deal with this past year. Uh, and I just wanted to try to bring a little bit of recognition to all that they have done and thank them. Our Director of Nutritional Services is um, Peter Esposito. I had a wonderful conversation with Robin um, a couple weeks ago when she helped the school board put on um, a gratitude event for each school for the teachers that were in the schools and nurses and people working in the schools. Um, and we had just a really heartfelt conversation about all that they've been through and the struggles and challenges and the grit and hard work that they have put into it all. So I just wanted to recognize and acknowledge all that they have done. Um, and I believe Marcy, unfortunately they could not be here tonight. And so I believe Marcy has something to read. 
I do. I have this written directly from Robin. Thank you, Heather. Robin writes, what a year this has been. This is to publicly thank the wonderful kitchen staff of Cape Elizabeth School. We feel it's important to every, that everyone knows their names, how long they have worked for the school, and that not once during all of this did one of them say, I cannot do this. Juggling their families and their children that were no longer in school, having to work longer hours than what they were hired to work. And I have some names to read for you. And I hope I get everybody's name pronounced correctly. Antoinette Harriman since September, 1996. Mayong Bryden since August, 2001. Jean Lavallee. September 2008, Karen Mangravito, March 2010, Susan Ware, August 2011, Kelly Wyther, August 2013, Darlene Griffin, August 2014, Leanne Collins, October 2014, Synthes Gleason, October 2016, Karen McLeod, September 2017, Melanie Bacek, August 2018. They all worked above and beyond working vacations, holidays, summer, when in fact they had only signed up for the school year. In the beginning, it was Darlene, Kelly, and myself. We were back to work March 16th, and our first food delivery went out March 18th. Peter and I thought it best to keep as few people in the kitchen as possible, not knowing much about the pandemic. All kitchen staff offered to work, including residents of the community, but we thought it was best to keep as minimum in the kitchen as possible. Kelly worked with us until the end of June when requests for donations dropped. She was more than willing to stay on and was on call if needed. Darlene and myself continued with Peter always in constant communication. The state kept him very busy, even throwing in a review in the middle of it all. This school year, we were faced with many challenges, learning a new order system and becoming contactless. Thank you, Troy, Kyle, Jason, Sarah, Jeff, and Nate for your support through this. Whenever anyone was out, the staff had to work that much harder as they, there weren't any subs for them. As, and they were exposed to delivery drivers, outside companies, and we recently had our walk-in freezer re installed and they had to be working right along with the repairmen. During the school year, the staff stayed in the kitchen from the moment they clocked in until they clocked out. If any one of you have been in the kitchen at the middle school, you know it's tight quarters with no windows. Last winter, they kept the supply and exhaust on overnight to bring in fresh air, which forced them to wear winter jackets most of the time while trying to work. Once school opened back up to all students this spring, we had to bring over two staff members from the high school, leaving only two there to feed the, stu the students and do the donations. The donations are a four day process. We have been sending meals home throughout the school year for the days that the students are not in school, including weekends and the 100% remote students. Lots of paperwork and reports to keep straight. This summer, Darlene and Cindy will be working at the high school assembling the donations and Sue will be in the middle school preparing lunch for the rec camp children. Karen Mangravita will be on call. The USDA waiver that is in place to ensure all children have access to food will continue until the end of August 2022, which means we all have a total of three summers staff will be working when they could be home. We cannot thank them enough. We need to give a big thank you to Officer Darren Estes and the Cape Elizabeth Police Department for loaning him out to us every Wednesday since March 18th, 2020 to do our deliveries to families in need. He picked up donations every Wednesday up until the end of May of this year because he switched to nights. Even coming in on his vacation to deliver to the families that depended and looked forward to their donations and seeing him. The one thing they could be sure of during this difficult time, he became a big part of their lives and I heard from many how wonderful he was and how happy the children were to see him, not just for their donation, but for his kindness and compassion. Thank you, Darren. And we would also like to thank resource officer, Dave Galvin for helping officer Estes at the beginning of the pandemic. Let's see. I would also like to thank Chris Storer, director of transportation. As soon as Darren told me he could no longer do deliveries within 10 minutes, Chris took care of it, loaning us a bus driver to take over. Thank you, Chris and Karen, who's the bus driver 
who will be doing our deliveries throughout the summer. Last year, we received a grant from Full Plates and Full Potential for 10,000 and received another one this year. We are hoping to install an ice machine in the high school kitchen. The food that goes out during the hot months need to be in coolers with ice. Once again, Peter and I cannot thank everyone enough. I'm happy to say not one of our employees contacted COVID-19 and then this is why we were able to stay operational every week since that day, March 13th. Thank you for your time, Robin Taylor. Yeah. I mean, hats off to all of them. You know, they're the essential workers that are in the background that um, we definitely don't want to forget that we want to remember and, and celebrate um, their dedication, their compassion, their care. Thank you all. Um, I particularly am grateful that Robin included their names and how long they've, they've worked here. That was, that was, um, that felt important to me. So thank you. Donna, it's up to you now to start recognizing retirees. Okay. First in line is Jeff Shedd. Jeff, you ready for this? <laughs> So Jeff was hired by the Cape Elizabeth School Department as principal of Cape Elizabeth High School on July 1st, 2001. During the past 20 years, he has also sometimes taught a social studies class in order to keep his teaching skills sharp and to keep an understanding of what we are asking of teachers. He learned along with the staff this year as they began to implement remote learning and synchronous teaching strategies. At one point during the year, he was able to explain to the board the additional time it took teachers to collect grade, provide feedback on, and document assignments. Because in his role as a teacher, he was performing those tasks. Throughout his career in the Cape Elizabeth School Department, Jeff has worked for six different superintendents. I'd like to read some of their comments. In 2005, Robert Lyman said, Jeff has had the most on his plate of any administrator in the district this year, including a $7 million renovation addition project, preparations for NEASC accreditation, implementing the learning results and ninth grade laptops. All this has been done and done well with professionalism and the ability to still smile while he and his staff have been handling all the other day-to-day -day issues of a high school as well. Cape Elizabeth High School is among, if not the best high school in Maine. It does an exceptional job of preparing students to go on to higher education and do well at some of the best colleges in the country. This is what Cape Elizabeth parents are looking for and Jeff and the high school deliver. The staff and students also have some great fun along the way as evidenced by last week's spring fling and staff student tug of war. In 2008, Alan Hawkins wrote in a letter to Jeff, to Jeff, you have often heard me talk about the community of dedicated people who ensure that our school system truly focuses on the future of our students. Developing a strong sense of knowledge, skills, behaviors, and attitudes helps them become successful individuals and citizens. You set an example yesterday with the actions you took to control the massive water flow resulting from the broken sprinkler head in the high school cafeteria. Remember that, Jeff? <laughs> Your knowledge, skills, behavior, and attitude led to actions that saved the high school's gymnasium floor. The results guarantee that the gym floor is intact and usable now and in the future. On behalf of the school board and the community as a whole, I would like to thank you for a job well done. I could go on and on with the many supportive comments written about Jeff during his years in the Cape Elizabeth School Department. But the one I like best is about the notebook that Jeff carries around. So for you, those of you who don't know this, Jeff carries around a notebook that has a label on the side that says, Jeff's brain. Here's what one of the superintendents has to say about this. Jeff's brain book is an integral part of Jeff's daily functioning at the school. The book contains all the components he needs for quick reference to schedule, program, connect student names and faces, et cetera. This book is truly a key for Jeff 
and one that he refers to frequently to organize his thinking processes. It is clear that this booklet both guides Jeff's forward movement and helps keep him focused on current issues. Jeff, you have given so much to this district. On behalf of all the students that you've helped and the staff that you've worked with, thank you. Congratulations on your retirement. And I'm wondering if you will carry your Jeff's brain book into retirement. <laughs> and now Nate has a few words to say. Thank you, Donna. Um, just good evening, uh, Donna. I wanna thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, also congratulations to you this evening as we recognize the wonderful capability of a staff heading off into retirement. It's funny how our lives come full circle. In another life, I had the great opportunity of working for Donna and in another capacity and the even greater privilege of uh, working for her, uh, teaching her three kids, which were just great memories on my end. Uh, but now on to Jeff Shedd. Uh, when I arrived at Cape Elizabeth High School, I was a pretty green administrator. Uh, Kelly, pistachio, seafoam, pear, pine, they just had, they had nothing on me. Uh, day one in this educational community, I just had a lot to learn. Luckily, over the next seven years, I got to learn from the best administrator a person could, could learn from. This is an undeniable fact. Um, looking back, I could not, nor would I have ever wanted to learn on how to become a principal of a high school from someone else. Uh, now, I joke to refer to Jeff as Dumbledore, uh, you know, from Harry <laughs> Potter series. Um, well, maybe I don't directly do it to his face ever, but uh, it is a common comparison I make to my wife, to some of our school staff, or to the wonderful students we have at Hogwarts, I mean, Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, I mean, if you ever think about it, um, Dumbledore is always in control. Uh, no one works harder than Dumbledore. Everyone, I mean, everyone respects Dumbledore. Only Dumbledore would carry a book around with, with him that's identified as his brain. Uh, Dumbledore is always five steps ahead of everyone else. No one's smarter, no one gives more, no one is more savvy and more efficient. Dumbledore is the kind of person who would bring a book to a high school boys playoff game and get away with it, wink, wink. I still laugh out loud sometimes thinking about Jeff walking into the gym with his book uh, to watch a very exciting playoff game. Uh, Dumbledore would always take the time to see his students play Quidditch, I, I mean, ultimate Frisbee, or go to our, one of our great one act plays or our fabulous musical performances. No one holds the academic achievement bar higher than Dumbledore. Uh, no one would enjoy a four o'clock afternoon Friday meeting more than Dumbledore does. Uh, Dumbledore has been around for a long, long time. He's been there. He's done that many, many times before. You know, he's the wise wizard prepared for just about every situation. Finally, Dumbledore is always the guy that gives ev uh, everyone can trust, can confide in. You can ask him for advice and tap into his wisdom. He's the wielder of justice, and he always is the hero trying to be fair and teach everyone a valuable life lesson. Um, even in his busiest days, Dumbledore would give uh, and give and give and leave his door wide open to all of us. Simply put, Dumbledore is Hogwarts, uh, just like Jeff Shedd is Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, unfortunately, you don't just replace Dumbledore, and you just don't replace a person like Jeff Shedd. You know, don't, don't despair. Cape Elizabeth High School will survive. And after a few months of respite this summer, we'll, we'll come back and we'll, th we'll thrive as a school, no doubt, in the fall. But that's mostly because Jeff Shedd has taught us well. Uh, he's been an unwavering in his leadership, and the bar will continue to be held high just because that's what Jeff would expect from all of us that are still in Cape Elizabeth High School. I know that I speak uh, from the entire Cape Elizabeth High School staff when I say, Jeff, we'll miss you a ton. Uh, you've been a mentor, a friend, an inspiration, and just a great leader to all of us. We could always count on you. And uh, good luck, Jeff. We, we're going to really miss you around here. So good luck. Congratulations, Jeff. Thanks, Nate. Can I say something, Donna? Yes. So Jeff, my husband Garth told me last night and he said he said this to you on Sunday that when he was a freshman at Cape Elizabeth High School, this was 1987, you were the student teacher in Randy Ray's ninth grade civics class. Okay, so this is my husband in ninth grade and our oldest son just graduated Sunday under your last year as the principal. And I just want to honor that span. I don't know how long 
if you were in Cape, I don't know the whole story in between that, but I do know you've been in Cape Elizabeth for 20 years as a principal. And I just wanna acknowledge that span of dedication to this district that you have given. Um, you've been steady, you've been calm, um, you've been rooted in your beliefs and steadfast in your job. Nate said it beautifully, um, you know, everybody, we're, we're going to be okay because you've taught us well. You have instilled so much in the students and the teachers and the staff in Cape Elizabeth, but no doubt there will be a hole. Um, I have always been impressed with your emails. I don't know how you write so well and so clearly and so detailed. Um, I would aspire to be that excellent in that capacity. Um, what I, I also recognize is in meetings, you are this quiet um, presence in the background. Often you don't take up space, but when you speak, people listen. Um, it is always important. Um, it is always well thought and it, it's always full of wisdom. Um, there's no fluff in anything you do um, by any means. You are clearly beloved by the community. Um, based on some of the writings that Donna repeated, um, all that Nate said, graduation students, for those who don't know, uh, gave him a CE, was it a CE or a CEHS, one or the other flag where they all signed it for you. Um, you have the nickname Shed Happens. Um, you weathered so many challenges. Donna explained some, there are more, we don't need to go into them. And always with a cool and confident um, manner that um, is respected by all. Um, but what I want to say for those who weren't part of graduation, which again, you gave another brilliant and amazing speech, but um, your words and message um, from your brother were do good work good and do good. And I hope that you reflect that back onto yourself because that is exactly you. You have done uh, not good, but amazing work. And you are not just good, but you are amazing. So um, thank you for all you have given this district, everybody that you have touched, everybody that you have influenced, um, everybody you have mentored, whether you realize it or not. Um, and I wish you complete enjoyment uh, in your retirement. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next retiree tonight is Ginger Raspeller. Ginger has been working for Cape Elizabeth School Department for over 19 years. Ginger's file is full of compliments about coaching and teaching students. Her work in the Achievement Center is highlighted as well as her work as a technology integrator. She has been an asset in her field to both students and colleagues. Jumping right in when the website was being changed over is just one illustration of her eagerness to continue learning and to contribute to the Cape Elizabeth School Department. And now Jeff is going to say a few words about Ginger. Congratulations, Ginger, on your next chapter. So I was trying to remember whether Ginger was here 18 or 19 years, so I, I think it's 19. And by the way, before I, be, I say anything else, I do want to say that when I brought a, game, a book to the basketball games and the volleyball games and the baseball games and the football games, I only read it during timeouts. <laughs> I just want to correct the record. I think Nate knows that, but it's only during timeouts. Okay, so Ginger. Um, so. I've been really fortunate that my career has largely paralleled Ginger's in length. Um, as Donna mentioned, she started off actually as a technician in the, in, the, in the school system for several years. And then she switched to be the pioneer founder of the Achievement Center. Um, so she was the Achievement Center coordinator for somewhere between eight and 10 years. I didn't look back, but somewhere in that distance. And she built it from nothing. Um, she built it from an idea that some of us had and she made it real and, sh and she made a difference with a lot of kids through her work in the Achievement Center. Um, and then she switched to be a tech technology integrator um, and she's led us through the pandemic um, 
And I, I will say in terms of Ginger's traits, uh, the, the things that come to mind are from day one, from the first time I met her, I think I was working down in what's now Nicole Carrera's room. It was the main office at the time because I think the renovation was just getting underway. And that was the main office. It's like this, this energetic person came in who knew a lot about technology and could absolutely explain it in a way that, that didn't confuse me. Um, and that's a real, real, real gift that Ginger has. She listens, she's, she's always listened well. She's communicated clearly about the most complex topics. Um, she's been a real gift in each one of her roles. Um, she is a tremendous organizer, which I think comes from her background as an engineer, or maybe she was drawn to engineering because she's a tremendous organizer. Uh, but she's, uh, and most recently, the evidence of that was what happened with the NWEAs. She was the chief worrier about the NWEAs, and because she was the chief worrier about the NWEAs, I knew I could sit back and not worry at all. <laughs> and that was absolutely right judgment on my part, because Ginger was at the center of what was happening. Um, she was a great problem solver, um, which I think also goes back to engineering. Um, and she was the person who came in, if she ever said, Jeff, can I have a few minutes of time? She never just presented me problems. She always presented problems and said, this is why I think it's happening. And this is what I think the solution is. It was always well thought out. And 90% of the time I just said, Ginger, do it. That sounds like a great idea to me. Every now and then I might ask her some questions and they, things might change a little bit, but just so constructive. Um, relentlessly positive. Um, Abs about kids, about her work, about her colleagues, about the school, just read. And, and that goes to this day. Um, uh, I think she approaches every day with the same joy that she had when she, when I first met her, when she was a technician. Um, she's just completely and utterly relentlessly positive. And the other thing that I did want to mention is that Ginger is, in addition to being the Achievement Center coordinator, the Achievement Center pioneer, she created it. It's her baby. Um, she was also the pioneer. It's a little bit less, less known. She was the pioneer of the entire Cape Elizabeth computer programming curriculum. Um, she took that role on. It wasn't part of her job responsibility, but she was particularly passionate about coding and in particular about getting girls into coding. And she was a great role model for that. She's made a difference in the lives of every staff member at Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, it's been an absolute, absolute gift to have her as a colleague for all the years that she's been here. And um, she has just done a great job and touched so many lives. So thank you, Ginger. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was lovely. Uh, um, our next retiree is Mary Poker Page, and Mary has been um, with Cape Elizabeth School Department for 20 years. Not only has Mary been a department head over the years, but she's also run the mock trial team, which has been incredibly successful during her tenure. She has been a class advisor to freshmen and sophomores, in addition to teaching her history classes. Um, and Mary is is not going to disappear because she is coming back part time. So that's pretty exciting. So Jeff, you have some things to say about Mary? Yeah. Um, so Mary has been a mainstay of the social studies department for many years. Again, another person whose career is largely parallel mine in length, and I've been delighted to be her colleague. Uh, when I thought about Mary, the, the first phrase that came to my mind when I thought about Mary was quiet passion. Um, she's not, she's not a loud person, uh, but she is incredibly passionate about what she does. She's incredibly passionate about what she teaches. She's incredibly passionate about kids. Um, she sets super high standards for her kids. Uh, but then she doesn't just set the high standards. She figures, okay, in a very methodical way, how can I get the kids to where I want them to be, to those high standards? and everything is supported, it is thought out, it is organized, and she takes kids places where I don't think they ever imagined that they could go. The best example of that is the, is the research project um, every single year. Um, there are other, absolutely other social studies teachers who are completely involved in that. Um, none do it better than Mary in terms of the way she supports the kids through that project. 
um, when when I go in the cafeteria and I'm a judge in the in the research projects, Mary's kids are poised. It's clear they're not surprised by anything that they're seeing. Uh, they're not flustered. They know what they're talking about. I can never stump them with any questions I ask them because she's probably asked them all to them to get them ready to do a great job and, and do their best. Um, I wanna mention the Holocaust course in particular that Mary has taught. I think it's a fabulous, fabulous course that is so in line with the mission of the Cape Elizabeth school system, teaching kids to be open to other people, teaching kids to find the facts before they reach judgments, um, teaching the kids how words can set us, can create a culture, which if they are not stopped in their tracks can lead, can lead to worse and worse things. And, I'm delighted that one of the courses that Mary's going to teach again next year is Holocaust because she just does a fabulous job and it literally changes kids' lives. And I'm delighted that it's here. I do want to mention technology for a second about Mary. Um, Mary will tell you that her weakness is technology. And I suppose at some level that is true because I think as with me, it doesn't necessarily come intuitively to Mary. But here's what I notice. She, and I say this with great affection, Mary, she whines and she complains about it. And then she <laughs> digs in and she talks to Ginger and she talks to Carolyn and she gets the support that she needs. And three weeks later or five weeks later, I go in and observe her class and she's like a pro, um, like as good as any teacher in the school system. It has been absolutely amazing to watch her grow. Um, I had the great, I have to mention mock trial. I believe the mock trial team won was it seven in a row, Mary, or was it eight? I can't remember. In all honesty, I don't remember either, but I okay. think it might be, it's at least, it's 10, but it may not be 10 in a row. And I think that might include someone else's uh, reign. Okay. Mary won a lot. She led a lot of mock trial championships. And she would be the first to tell you that her role was the orchestrator. Um, she was trying to coordinate and manage all these diverse kids and all these really st strong personality attorneys um, and trying to keep everybody heading in the same direction. And she did it with quiet passion and organization and people listened to her. And the success, the success she had was, the success that the team had was because of the growth that happened under Mary's leadership of the mock trial team. Um, she is also, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say, she, no, no I've got the next to the last thing I'm gonna say. She is a great team player. Um, she is a great colleague to her colleagues in the social studies department. She works collaborative, collaboratively with them. She plans collaboratively. She assesses collaboratively. She sets high standards. She's a leader um, in, a, in a quiet way. And she has been a department chair as well, as Donna said. And the last thing I will say about her, and it is, is that she is incredibly flexible and supportive of any kid whenever any kid needs help. Um, she doesn't deviate from her high standards, but she figures out a way to get the kid the extra time, the extra attention, the different explanation. Um, it is truly amazing the work that Mary has done over the years to get many, many, many kids through. Um, and she has touched so many lives and I consider myself very fortunate to work with her for this many years. So thank you, Mary. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you. I have one comment to make. I am not good at scheduling, apparently, because I'm supposed to be somewhere else at a dinner now. So I'm going to leave. Thank you for the kind words. I'm so glad I'm coming back. It's been a privilege to be part of this, uh, this high school, this, the school district, and I'm thrilled. So thank you so much. Thanks, Mary. Bye. Um, our next retiree is Barb McLean. And Barb has been here since... January of 1988, 33 years. And I think of that, I, I moved to Maine in 1988. So that's a very long time, Barb. Um, her file is full of comments on her positive and cheerful nature and her ability to be helpful to both staff and the public. She's a valued member of the Palm Cove team and a consistent thread throughout her tenure has been her willingness to go above and beyond. And I know when I stop into the office, Barb always has a smile and she's always ready to help. So I know Jason has something that he would like to say about Barb. 
Yes, and Barb, I prom promise I won't embarrass you. Um, I'm, it's such an honor to, to recognize your, your long standing career at, at Pond Cove tonight. Uh, so yes, as, as Donna mentioned, Barb has been, if my calculations are correct, um, at Pond Cove for 34 years, um, which the institutional knowledge that Barb has, uh, we, are, we are all um, kind of secretly panicking wondering what we are going to do with, without Barb. Um, but we also have confidence that we can, at the beginning of next year, possibly text her and ask her a few questions to get us through the, the opening of school. Um, I have so enjoyed getting to know Barb professionally and personally over the past four years. Uh, she is, she's seen so many changes and it's, I love having conversations with her about all of the changes she's seen through the various principals and superintendents and different structures within the school um, and, and how things cycle through and there are ideas that come back years later that almost look the same. Um, she, she has so much knowledge about um, running a school. Um, and we all know, we all know some, some who really runs the school, right? And that's, that's actually, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, uh, as, as Barb could tell you, a major component of my decision-making process is walking up to Barb and say, how do we handle this? Um, I would say a high percentage of time, that's my go-to. Um, and she has great ideas and great solutions. And um, she just has a huge impact on the school. So I think mostly... Um, you know, what we'll miss, we'll miss the institutional knowledge, but we'll miss a very calm, steady presence, um, confidence about what she's doing and the decisions that she's making, uh, forgiveness of, for all of us when we all make mistakes and it impacts her, um, which is a lot, lots of things impact her <laughs> when we make mistakes. She is the one on the front lines. Um, uh, we'll miss her wisdom and in just her caring and, and, and um, wonderful personality. So the one question that I, we don't need an answer tonight, but I'm just wondering how long before Barb can sub in the office? <laughs> because I think there's like a few, a few month period, but we're gonna be, we're gonna be reaching out to you, Barb. I think it's 30 days, Jason. So. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'll mark it on my calendar. <laughs> but thank you so much, Barb, for your service. It's been just so great working with you. Thank you. Congratulations, Barb. <laughs> Another face of our school is Joanne Mor Moriarty, who has been in Cape Elizabeth School Department for 22 years. Joanne has not only worked in the front office at the high school, but she's also been on several student advisory councils. She's acted as advisor to freshmen, sophomore, and senior classes. She worked with student government. Uh, and to name a few, she's incredibly responsive and resourceful. She's proactive and is not easily agitated in the hustle and bustle of high school students and the public. And I have been over there when it's been hustling and bustling and Joanne has been calm, cool and collected. So Joanne, we are, we are going to miss you, but um, know you have some big plans. So Jeff, I hand it back to you. All right. Joanne, Joanne predated me. Um, how many years, Joanne? 23? 22. 22, okay, I was right. May 1st, 1999. All right, okay. Um, so Joanne is the front face of the high school. Um, for about 15 of those years, she had, a, she had a partner who sat next to her and then I yanked that away from her. And now she's the, completely the alone front face of the high school. And she does a great she does a great job of it, um, and it is a difficult job. Um, and you're managing the phone calls, um, and sometimes they're frustrated people or happy people, or you never know what you're going to get when the phone rings, or or just information about a, a about a, a, a from a parent about a student who's going to be dismissed to go to a dentist, and the notice comes in five minutes before the student has to be dismissed. That which is sort of an, Joanne has to deal with those and figure it out, or 
kids who have medical issues. Um, for example, it happened just the other day. A kid had a medical issue in class. The call goes to Joanne. Joanne calls Nate. Um, and everybody starts moving and doing what they need to do. Um, she knows how to handle a, a huge number of issues that come up. Um, she's the attendance guru of the high school. Um, and to the extent there's any appearance that we know what we're doing in terms of attendance, it's absolutely 100% related to Joanne. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, it, and we try to keep that impression anyway. Um, Joanne is also, and I want to mention, she lives in Cape Elizabeth, and I think that makes a big difference because she knows a lot of people. She's really sociable. She's been here for a long time, um, and that is hugely beneficial. So she can talk to people not only as, as, as parents of school kids, but she can talk to parents as friends, as neighbors, as, and it, it's really a help. Um, and she, so she, know, she knows a lot of people. She knows how to get the, the answers to things. A lot of times the question from a parent might be about something that everybody assumes she must know something about because she of course knows everything about everything or at least they believe she does. Um, and, and sometimes she doesn't know because Nate or I have forgotten to, told her, to tell her something and she handles those things well. <laughs> she, she, um, she gets the answers that people need. Um, I, I do wanna say sort of end up with two things. Um, and one is Joanne is, in my tenure, the best class advisor any class has ever had, bar none. It's not even close. I've had great, great class advisors who've worked at the high school. It is an absolutely thankless job. Well, there, do, there tend to be thanks towards the end of the, the fourth year, uh, but it is it calls, it calls for taking these ninth graders who have absolutely zero idea what they're doing and shaping them and growing them and guiding them and leading them and whipping them and doing whatever they need to do to help them to grow as young, as young people. And I don't know how many times I've twisted Joanne Bordiardi's arm um, at the end of the latest class that she's just graduated. And I've said, Joanne, you got one more year in you? <laughs> and Joanne has in, in, invariably said, yes, I'll, I'll do it again. Um, and man, there have been a ton of kids who have benefited from her guidance and who have grown under her guidance. And the last thing I want to say is that about Joanne, to understand how important that position is, is every, I in my office, which the door is usually open, can hear Joanne and Susan Ray as well, who responds equally well, but Susan Ray, they are just, just absolute colleagues and friends. Kids who come in in distress in the main office for any number of reasons. Um, there are kids who have difficulties at home. There are kids who have personal difficulties. They come in crying into the school. Um, Joanne takes them into a conference room and comforts them and really gives them what they need, the at an attention, uh, listening ear, friendship. And it is incredible and it is like clockwork that every year, the last two weeks of the school, how many kids I overhear coming in, even kids that Joanne has said, you've got to get a tardy slip, you've got to get a tardy slip, you've got to get a tardy slip, and she's maybe chewed, chewed kids out a few times for it. They come back and they say thank you, and they give her a hug, and they give her appreciation. Um, she's been a really important person to thousands of kids who have gone through Cape Elizabeth High School in all the time I've been here and before. So thank you, Joanne, for everything that you've done. Congratulations, Joanne. Thank you. <laughs> so Linda Alfiero does what I think is one of the hardest jobs ever, teaching our little ones. Um, hardest thing I ever did teach was to teach first grade. So Linda has been working for the Cape Elizabeth School Department for 26 years. And where's Linda? She, oh, you have you have some friends there with you. <laughs> Great. Family yes, care. my family's here. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. She has been the coach for the robotics team, a team leader and a literary specialist during a uh, literary specialist during her time and Cape, uh, Cape Elizabeth School Department. Her dedication to detail and planning helped solidify her recognition as a leader in Pond Cove 
She has taught several grade levels during her tenure, including kindergarten, first and second grades. So Jason has a few words that he would like to say. Yes, thank you, Donna. Linda, wait, I can't see you. Okay, there you are. <clears throat> you have your family with you? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is, it's an honor to, to, to recognize you tonight, Linda. Um, I think you know, I, I, I just have the, the utmost respect for you. And as Donna mentioned, um, just simply the position that you hold is I think many, many people do understand um, how um, involved and how challenging, but yet how rewarding teaching our youngest learners can be. A visit to your classroom, Linda, is um, it's just an amazing experience. And for those that haven't had a chance to, to see Linda teach, um, she has an outstanding skill set. She is extremely passionate and she absolutely loves every child in her classroom. Uh, and it's just, it's so clear every time you go in, every time you walk by, um, just a true inspiration for every, every child and every adult in the building. So you should feel just so proud of what you've accomplished um, over. And I don't, I'm not sure if it was 26 or 27 years. I had 27, but it's right, that's a long time. Um, so, you know, I can just certainly say that you've inspired everyone at Pond Cove. You are um, just extremely dedicated and extremely trusted member of our staff and, and everyone values what you have to say and what you're thinking and you've made a huge impact. Um, I wish that I had known you, look, just looking back at your history when you were a, a, the team leader before there were assistant principals, and um, that must have just been a fantastic time for Pond Cove. I'm sure you did a wonderful job with that, just given um, your approach to, to every issue you encounter. So thank you, it's been so nice working with you for the past four years. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you. Mary Dulac is another teacher who works with our little ones. Um, Mary's been in the district for 27 years. She's been a team leader, a peer mentor, as well as having served on multiple committees during her tenure at Pond Cove. She's been recognized for a thoughtful approach to teaching and her commitment to the success of her students. And Jason, you have some things to say about Mary. Yes, hi, Mary. Uh, I, just to kind of play off of what Donna mentioned, a thoughtful approach, approach to teaching. And that is exactly where my mind goes when I think about um, the times when I've observed you teach and just observed you um, working with children in any capacity. Um, if those that haven't had a chance to see um, Mary in, in action, uh, she, is, she has very, very high standards for herself and very high standards for her students, but an extremely caring approach and just loves every student that she works with. And I have had the pleasure of seeing her transition from a special educator um, to a literacy uh, specialist, um, specifically uh, training in reading recovery. And um, again, this is to, to kind of, you know, what I mentioned about, about what Linda does, you know, teaching those youngest students. Um, many people may not understand um, what is involved in working with the younger students. And I know that teaching reading recovery is not for the faint of heart. Um, it, the, the expectations are extremely high. And oftentimes um, the students um, have um, learned some reading behaviors that they, they need to be retrained. And that's very, very challenging to do, to unlearn some, some behaviors that were previously learned and then learn new behaviors. Uh, it is, it can be very taxing. And, and Mary does it every day with a smile. And um, she knows when to really encourage a child to work harder and when it's time to kind of just step back and, and, and let the child take a break. And those are, that's a very important skill set 
Um, so Mary, it's been so great getting to know you. And so I'll miss our conversations about Greek Easter. And um, I'm wondering if you want to keep the, the green dismissal duty vest in the walkie talkie, because we could probably send some of those with you. And the, and the rain poncho and boots, yeah. thank you. <laughs> and the, yeah, and the little boots that slip over your shoes, yeah. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Mary. Congratulations, Mary. So Michelle, I gave you a couple extra minutes to prepare for Troy and what he might have to say. So <laughs> Mary's been in the district for 31, uh, Mich sorry, Michelle has been in the district for 31 years. Her file is chock full of affirmations of her can do and positive attitude. Another face of our of schools to the public and um, Michelle always has a smile on her face and um, is welcoming uh, at the middle school. There's descriptions of knowing her job well and of coworkers who wanted to be around her as well as her ability to adapt and learn new systems. Um, many, many positive comments in her file. So Troy, be kind. <laughs> so I know that Michelle loves this limelight and the attention that she's getting right now. So I will be long-winded and make it last for a while. Um, <laughs> No, actually, I'm going to be very, today is going to be the nice, sweet story day. And then when we have our staff gathering, it will be a little more fun, I think. Um, but quite honestly, I do have a picture of her dressed up, maybe, that I, ooh, good face. Yeah, I won't do that to you. Um, but I, a funny story, Michelle is um, one of the most kind and caring people that I've ever met. Um, and a great example of that is last year, I, I think I left and then I had to come back into the office and I caught her with Susan Dana dressing up um, and she was dressing as Minnie Mouse and Susan Dana was Eeyore and they were just going to a friend's house to help support them and their child. Um, and this was after work and she, and she was horrified, I think, that I caught her, yet I think it didn't surprise me at all. Um, so she thought I would never have a photo of that and I do have a photo of that but I won't show it right now because I still have to work with Michelle until, well, a couple more weeks, but that will show up. It could be on the website at some point. Um, so largely with Michelle, it's, it's, it's hard. You, I have stuff written down and I hear everybody, I hear Dumbledore, I hear all these things and it confuses me on what I wanna say. But so quite honestly, Michelle is really a big part of my brain, I think, just as Jeff has as a book and, and she's always there to kind of make me think things through or to sound things off from, or to say, hey, mister, you better think about that. And it just, she's so, her, her calm, confident demeanor is so appreciated. Um, it takes a special person really to have a fifth grader crying at your desk and you wanna comfort them, um, or an eighth grader that maybe is not crying at your desk <laughs> and just the very next minute and to be able to switch on and off and to handle the, the situation so appropriately um, she has the ability to be strong and firm without being mean. Um, and I think that's, that's a, that is a special skill that a lot of people don't have. Um, and the team of, of Kate and Michelle, it's kind of like the Batman and Robin. I mean, they go together and I think there's a big, I know that, I know that Kate's feeling that same loss that I'm feeling. I could not believe it when she shocked me and said she was retiring. I, I thought, why are you retiring early? Uh, that surprised me. She's, the most energetic, spunky person um, that I, I have ever worked with. And you walk into that office, no matter what your mood is, and you walk out of there smiling because it's usually a laugh or a quick-witted comment that kind of just sets everything right again. So, um, so that stuff's awesome. She's obviously great at her job. All of you are. And when you sit here and just listen to the totality of years, um, somebody was, so 31 years. What year was you hired, Michelle? Must have been 88-ish. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, 89. Yeah, so you're the after first. You're after I graduated from high school. That's a funny yeah. joke. <laughs> you're, all the time. Loves, you're cute. You're cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She loves that conversation. Um, yeah. But no, I seriously, I don't know really what we'll do without Michelle. I think that she she's got the better end of her retiring just the way that it should be. Um, you know, she's going to be going and spending time with her grandchildren. And they are so lucky to have her. 
um, and and they should they should treasure that every minute. So, um, as principals or as any position, that you get the special times in your in your life, and and they are when you can hire somebody for the first time and give them that opportunity, um, and then it's when you can speak about somebody that somebody else had the wisdom to hire 30 years ago that was a great decision, um, and that's where I'm at today. So. Michelle, I know you were worried what I was going to say. There is a lot to say, and I did reach out to the whole staff to figure out you know, who has a who has a good gutcha story. And basically, the response was, "Yeah, we're not giving you our material. We're going to save it." So, <laughs> so that's where we're at. Um, but thank you, Michelle. the The office will not be the same without you in it. Um, but just as Nate said, I'm sure we'll all carry on. It's just there'll be a lot of what would Michelle have said about that or you know, when I try to push that last second email out on Friday because I didn't get it written in time and, you know, and she has to proofread it and make sure that I have kind of covered all my bases. She does it with a smile. I think it's almost expected. Um, she knows where my signature stamp is. She knows all this stuff that I can't find if I had to. So, um, Michelle, I feel fortunate to have, have had you teach me the ropes at Cape um, and kind of she's great at defending my decisions and helping me think through some so she doesn't have to defend them. So, um, you will definitely be missed. I know you'll be in and out of the building. Um, so thank you for all you do. It is, it is definitely valued and appreciated. Um, and we will miss you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, Troy. Thank you, Troy, for your kind words. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Candace O'Brien began working for Cape Elizabeth School Department on uh, August 27th, 2013. So she's been with the district for over seven years. Uh, she has worked um, in the math department. Notes of Candace being a strong planner run throughout her evaluations and observations. She's a kind demeanor and a keen sense of humor and they have allowed her to manage her classrooms well and enliven the students who want to learn. So Jeff. So yeah, Candace. Is Candace here today? I'm right. I don't think she is here. I don't think she is. Okay. Well, I'm. I. She. She. She well deserves mention. So I'm going to do that. And Donna, you've already captured some of the highlights. Um, I well remember the, the interview, the first interview that we had with Candace before we hired her. Um, and one of the things that I remember about it, it, it was like, wow, this is a really down to earth meaner, who's really smart, who has a complete and utter sense of humor. I remember laughing frequently during the interview um, because she would make fun of herself. She'd make fun of others. She just has a great sense of humor, which she brings to her classes. Um, she's incredibly caring. Um, her colleagues love her, love working with her. Um, she is a she is a Down East Yankee, and I think she's probably Down East right now at her home um, in Cutler with her husband. Um, I do want to mention about her as a teacher. She is the teacher, and she is the, every school needs a teacher who says, "What I really want to do is teach the classes with the who have the kids who need the most help, who struggle the most in school." Um, and that was Candace for many years. Um, and she did a really, really good job in her classes. And I would walk into her classes when I was observing her and there was always laughter. Uh, there was clarity. Um, there were kids being asked questions. And the other thing that I heard repeatedly from kids as Candace walked around the room just sort of checking in with how they were doing was always, it was never Mrs. O'Brien. I don't think I've ever heard a student talk to her and, and call her Mrs. O'Brien. It's always Mrs. OB. It's always Mrs. OB. That's what the kids know her as. I suspect that some of her kids don't even know her last name. Um, and I bet I would win the, that bet. And I'm watching Ginger Raspiller and she knows I'm probably right about that. So it is Mrs. OB. She is also um, one of those people, Ginger is another, by the way, who I'll go to theater events or concerts or volleyball games or basket and and very frequently Candace was there cheering on kids getting to know them getting to appreciate them getting to watch them and then having something to talk to them about the next morning giving them some praise for what they did and the last thing that I want to mention about Candace is I am not sure how many clubs that she is the advisor of um, and because she is the person who if some kid some student 
um, bright, resourceful student, and our students at Cape Elizabeth High School are that, they have this idea of a new club that they want to create, and they go through, a, and they will go to Candace, and she will invariably say yes. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say I have no idea how many clubs she is currently advising or how many she's ever advised in the past. I do know the most creative one, and Candace did it because she's passionate about knitting, so she created a knitting club. And it was a co-ed knitting club and it was a small group and it got together, I think one afternoon and the kids just knitted and it met, it met a need for those kids. And when kids came to Candace with a great idea or a, or a bad idea that met a need, that met a need that it would serve the kids and give them a place to feel together and part of something bigger than themselves. Candace was one of those people that the kids could, could could count on to say yes to them. And she said yes repeatedly to kids and she's been a real positive force in the high school for quite a few years and I'm delighted for her retirement and wish her everything good. So thank you. Congratulations, Candace. So I think Deb Butterworth wins the prize for the most boxes tonight. <laughs> I see a, I see Deb, I see a D, I see Deborah Butterworth. So you've got a lot of boxes out there, Deb. <laughs> Deb's worked for the district uh, for 27 years, starting on November 2nd, 1994. She's been a peer mentor, a student support team member, and a recipient of the Grinnell Award from the uh, Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. She was the first teacher to assume the role of math team leader and is so well regarded in the community that a member of the public recently spoke of her during a public comment, just to make the board aware of how she's valued she is in the district. Thank um, you. So Jason's going to say a few words about you, Deb. Yes, thank you, Donna. Deb, when, when Donna mentioned boxes, I was thinking she was talking about your teaching materials. Because... Oh. <laughs> well, probably so Deb, you. <laughs> well, Deb took, Deb took some of her, her materials home for remote teaching and just returned them. And 45, there were 45 boxes. <laughs> yes. And not small boxes. So, <laughs> so that kind of um, creates a picture of that, that starts to create a picture of Deb. So if you go into Deb, when you went into Deb's math lab and observed her math club, um, for one thing, she was very organized, so I don't want to paint a picture of someone that was disorganized, but she was always, always seeking materials that were engaging and motivating for students um, so that they could learn the, just the, the basic math skills. And um, again, going back to the, the concept of teaching our youngest learners, um, although oftentimes, um, you know, Deb was teaching some of the most basic math skills. It is extremely challenging work and it takes a lot of heart and as much heart or more heart than it takes um, um, teaching strategies. Uh, Deb is, has been an inspiration to everyone at Pond Cove, students, staff. It's, you know, I'm not, as I'm thinking about Deb and Mary and, and Linda and Barb, I'm not sure that I understood the gravity of this until tonight to see them all here. And, and um, this is a big deal. Um, Deb has, uh, a Pond Cove without Debbie is going to be interesting and different. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. Uh, Debbie, your uh, birthday cards, through email for every staff member. I'm not sure how many years you did that. Um, uh, personalized based on each individual staff member's likes. Um, it, just amazing, the research that she knew everyone and what they liked and, and what would make them feel good that day on their birthday. Um, and that, that just that alone, um, the work that goes into that. Um, I think, when I think about Deb, her teaching with students, her relationship with staff, and, and everything I know about her, she is a person that gives and gives and expects very little um, in return. 
Deb, I, it's been an honor to, to know you and I've so enjoyed our conversations and I've learned so much from watching you teach and, and getting advice from you um, throughout the past four years, just about um, navigating Pond Cove and, and, and being a new, a new person at Pond Cove. And thank you so much for everything you've just, you've impacted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children and, and families. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Congratulations, though. Thank you. And I don't think Pam Salerno's here tonight, but um, certainly deserves recognition. Pam has been uh, with the district for 15 years. She's been in ed tech in the school district for those years and is known for her thoughtfulness and calm demeanor. She is patient, gentle, and kind with her instruction and clearly enjoys working with children. And I think Dell is going to say a few words about Pam. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that Pam has play, played a pivotal role at middle school in the time that I've been at Cape and that she's been a great team player and that uh, she has a great sense of humor and she establishes wonderful relationships with the students she works with. And she's definitely approached each student from a student-centered philosophy with regard to teaching. And she will be sorely missed at the middle school. And I certainly wish her well in her next adventures. And if she is watching this or with us, I just wanna thank her for all of her service to Cape Elizabeth schools and students. Thank you, Pam, congratulations. So last, but certainly not least, um, is Donna. Donna, I don't have statistics, but I do know that you've had an incredibly distinguished and successful career. And I feel very grateful that um, the last years have been here with us in Cape Elizabeth. Um, when we went for the site visit um, in Marana Cook, um, people were crying talking about you, um, thinking that you were, knowing that you were leaving, potentially leaving. Um, and at the time I didn't quite understand that. Um, and now I absolutely do. Um, you are beloved as well. You um, are, um, you are steady. You are incredibly knowledgeable. You get things done. Uh, but at the center of all of that, there is a kindness that comes through that is, so amazing. Um, you are passionate about your family, uh, going into your office, your, uh, the picture of your children and your grandchildren, and, and they, you weave them into your stories. They are lucky to have you as a mother and grandmother. Um, and I know that is a big part of your plan going forward, and they are lucky to get more time with you. Um, I do know that, um, I don't know which son it was, but one living out west, so wanted you to come out during COVID. He was ready to send you a complete hazmat suit. Oh, he to did come. send it. <laughs> oh, he did send it and was like, no, we need the visit from you. So um, I love that. Um, the closeness that you have, maybe not physically with all of your family, because I know they are spread out West and in Vermont, but um, the emotional and uh, connection that you have with family um, is representative of what you have done here in the district as well. You are a uniter. Um, you have brought the district closer together. And one example of that is people have open door policies, which is lovely. But Donna invites people in town hall working there to, in the district to come have lunch in her big table in her office. And it's just an open invitation. And before COVID that was happening regularly in my understanding um, and sorely missed by many when COVID happened and those lunches could not occur. Um, as your chair for the past two years, um, I have learned so much watching you, listening to you, um, observing uh, your professionalism and your grace uh, through difficult times has just impressed me and um, so much. Uh, I have come to admire you incredibly deeply on so many levels and that being one of them. Um, you have not had an easy tenure here at Cape Elizabeth. 
Um, you have been thrown quite a few challenges, obviously COVID being probably the biggest that any superintendent ever has dealt with. Um, you uh, have been strong and again, steady and focused throughout it all. Um, and I think that you, um, part of your guiding light has um, been that you've never lost sight of the kids and the goals that we have as a district. Um, and though you say that you um, look back on your career, you just said this, and that those youngest kiddos are some of the most challenging job experiences that you've had. I remember very clearly, and this wasn't in the interview process, but you were in the library, stooped down talking with those little kiddos before we invited you in to talk with us. And so they may have been challenging, but you have a passion for all the kiddos from the younger grades all the way up. And you just give your heart and soul to what is best with them. And in all the conversations I've had with you over the past few years, when some decisions have been difficult, it's always been what's best for the students, the, what's best for the students and what follows our goals that we have set. Um, I hope you know, as you move forward to spend time with more family, um, I know that this was bittersweet for you because you love your job so much. Um, and this isn't, um, a, phew, it's over, goodbye, I'm out of here. Um, you, you have mixed feelings about it, um, but it is time for you to go be with your family and watch those little young kiddos grow up. And I am thrilled that you are at that point and are able to do that. But I hope that you take with you um, really to heart that you have had a huge impact on this district. You have done so much good. You have um, been a gift and you, my paper is now turning because I ran out of space talking about you. Um, and I am so grateful having worked with you. You, um, you have brought so much to all of us. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am honored to have had uh, two years as your chair. I'm honored to have worked with you. I'm honored to have known you. Um, I hope we uh, stay in touch and I get to see pictures of your little ones as they grow up and I wish you the absolute best. And I'm trying really hard not to cry. Um, so I know there are many people uh, looking to speak. Um, I, I, if somebody wants to raise their hand next, I'm gonna call on Marcy. Thank you, Heather. I have, I have been blessed to have had this opportunity working with Donna in the school department over the past two years. Donna created an environment for us that encouraged growth and learning, and I have looked forward to coming to work every day to be part of her team. And I couldn't have asked for a better mentor in this position, and I'm extremely grateful. And we will miss you, Donna. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. Are there others? Um, I see Kimberly raising her personal hand. Go ahead. Hello, sorry. Um, all right, I think glasses will be helpful here. Um, <laughs> Donna, I, um, I'm, I'm so sad to see you leave. Um, you, your presence has strengthened this district. Um, you're a great leader. You, um, you set high standards, um, you encourage growth, and then you offer the care and support um, to help people achieve um, what, what you've set forth for them. Um, you brought um, so much wisdom, strong instincts, um, and, um, and just like such a passion for children. Um, you, you always are you know, asking about my kids with, um, with genuine interest. Um, and uh, and I love hearing the stories about your grand grandchildren. Um, you've created such a, a warm environment. You're um, you're kind and caring, um, and uh, and I, I love the relationships um, that have developed. Um, I, especially, I, I think of you and Marcy, the dynamic duo up there, always looking for ways to bring money into our town and uh, and support our students. Um, we, um, 
Yeah, I think you you've just been you've been um, such a steady force. Um, we've we've had um, you know some interesting times while you've been here, and you've handled them with grace. Um, you remain unflustered and professional. Um, you have guided us so well. Um, so um, I know we are going to miss you so much, um, and your family getting extra time with you is going to gain so much. So I hope you enjoy your time with them and know that you have um, left such a good trail behind you. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. Wynn is here and would like to say something. Go ahead, Wynn. Uh oh, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he went, actually. Where did he go? Oh, wait, wait, wait. There you are. When I'll allow him to talk. There we go. All right. right. Yeah, um, you would you normally expect the Cape Elizabeth or the, the association president to basically say good riddance, you know, <laughs> when the superintendent's leaving. But uh, that's not the case. You know, um, I, first, I first met Donna in the Cape Elizabeth library um, when she was first touring around. And she said to me, oh, I guess I'm going to get to know you really well. And I wasn't sure how to take that. And so I felt like I had to do a little digging. And I called the president at the other at the other place. And, um, and I was a little nervous after speaking to this person. Um, however, um, we first we first bonded during our, our the first sit down that we had together when I asked her if she had ever been to this obscure department store in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And she looked at me and I think she thought I had had some sort of file or dossier on her and that I had known some secrets about her. But what it was is that Donna went to Lycoming College, and, um, which is in Williamsport, and my grandparents um, and my father is from Williamsport. So I knew a lot about Williamsport. And uh, Donna and I talked a lot about that. And um, she told me some things that, about her experience there that I promised I would never reveal. Um, so I won't. Um, <clears throat> um, but, uh, you know, uh, Donna has, uh, has always had an open phone line. Um, she's always been willing to talk. Um, and I'm sure that um, I ticked her off plenty. And, of course, she probably ticked me off as well, but it never affected our professional relationship and that never suffered. And I really appreciated that. Um, you know, I, I, I learned a lot from Donna and I think the biggest thing I learned is that um, hell would have to freeze over 600 times before I would ever want to be a superintendent. Um, so, um, so I have to admire that she has done that and, and we've been able to keep our sense of humor and uh, that's been nothing has been more important than that this year, um, which has been incredibly difficult on everyone. And, you know, uh, it was always reassuring to call Donna um, during this year and both of us to be able to go to basically say, oh, hang it in there. I got a little, I'll make it. Oh, you know, so we were we were both at the end of our at the end of our rope. And, you know, I just want to say um that Donna is, uh, you know, I want to thank you for steering our ship uh, for the last three years. And I hope you really look forward to captaining your own little boat around your lake um, during your retirement. So thank you very much. Thanks, Wen. Uh, Jen Lackery. I'm going to be really brief. I'm just going to say a few words saying that Donna gave me a chance um, my background is in the food and wine industry. And I spent 25 years there and then decided that not having a retirement <laughs> or weekends was not as fun at my age. And so I looked for another job and I went into that interview thinking that I was not going to get it because I was 15 minutes late and super stressed out, but they, gave, they took a chance on me. And then they kept me around, even though I have the weirdest sense of humor. And I look forward to coming into uh, work every day with her and Kathy and Dell and Jess and Marcy and everybody there. And Donna is the driving force behind all of it. And I'm very sad that she's leaving, but I'm going to insert myself into her retired life. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Anyone else? Kathy, go ahead. Yes, I would also like to say a few words about the, uh, the person across the hall. Um, but I also want to acknowledge that this is an amazing, amazing group of retirees. And I, I share Jason's consternation. Um, I think everyone here is thinking, oh my goodness. Um, so Donna, this is probably not the tenure that you thought you were going to be having. Um, but you have, um, you've, you've been an amazing leader. And, th and there's two qualities in particular that I've learned from that I want to highlight and um, and and that I want to thank you for. Um, so the first is your spine of steel, um, which I think people don't always expect, but it it is there. And you have demonstrated time and again um, a willingness to make difficult decisions um, when the best interests of students are at stake. You you put them first. Um, you don't hesitate. Um, and that's that's very much to be admired. And and I will say that through that, I've learned the value of having really good policy. So thank you for that too. Um, and then you have a heart of gold. So it's an interesting combination. You've established, as has been mentioned, a, a, a community at central office and on the leadership team, which is no small feat. And your emphasis on the importance of work-life balance has kept us all sane. So. I wish you lots of time on the lake with your beloved children and grandchildren, a lot of Hallmark movies, and I hope that you rest easy in the satisfaction of a, of a career and a job. Very well done. Thank you. You make me cry. Okay. My, my spine is melting. <laughs> Anyone else? I'll go, Heather. I'll just say, Donna, uh, thank you for everything. I know, well, I don't really know, but I can only imagine that the job of a superintendent, it really isn't for the faint of heart, especially at the times that we've we've been in, but you've led us. Just all the adjectives that were used to describe you, you know, I had here smart, steadfast, calm, professional. I can think of so many more. So thank you so much, Donna. And and also when when others have said that, at the heart, you've always had our, our children, our students in mind, and I think in turn the community in mind as well. And I can remember coming to the office with Millie, and you always greeted us just with the warmest uh, smile, and you reached down to her and spoke to her. So thank you for everything, and good luck. Thanks, Laura. And I haven't worked with you very long, um, only a few months, and it's been a pleasure to work alongside of you on the policy committee. And I mean, I thank you for your tireless efforts over the last year because it has not been an easy year to be a superintendent. And there's no doubt in my mind that you have just put the kids and the staff, mental health, their mental health and their physical well being in the forefront of your decisions. And so I too wish you some much needed rest and relaxation with your family. Thanks, John. Go ahead, Cindy. Donna, I also want to thank you for your, your leadership and the steady hand you've provided. I think, um, you know, someone uh, earlier mentioned that um, in, in reference to Jeff and in reference to you, that you were just what we needed at that time. And at the time you joined the district, you, um, I don't think we'd be where we were today um, without you. And I appreciate the, the leadership um, and the guidance that, that you've given us and the team you've built. And even though you've only been here a few years, um, the changes have been significant and uh, appreciated. And I think have, have um, been, uh, have moved the district forward in a great way. And I really appreciate that. And uh, seeing you and getting to know you better over the past few months and working with you, I really appreciate how, uh, what a collaborative leader you are and, and the approach you've taken to really building such a strong team for our, our district and we will miss you. Um, and, I, and I also appreciate, um, you know, on a, a personal basis and uh, I appreciate um, how you've, you've worked with my family and, and particularly with Elliot and, and 
responding to his emails and questions with so much patience <laughs> and, and um, always having the answer there for him and he appreciates it too and we will miss you. So thank you. Thanks, Cindy. Go ahead, Phil. I, I, just briefly, I can't say it better than what I've heard so far, but I just wanted to touch upon one thing, which is I, you really brought such a thoughtful and inclusive um, process to decision making. And that's something that I really um, appreciated throughout this process, whether it was the building committee or the school COVID reopening issues or the budget. I always felt like um, you, first of all, made sure that everyone's voice was heard, that we took the time, even if there was pressure to go faster, and um, that you made you put board members in the position to make the best decisions that we could by giving us the best information. So I, I really appreciated that. And um, it's been really great to get to know you and work with you over the last year and a half through my tenure on the board. And I wish you all the luck in your retirement. Thanks, Bill. Go ahead, Elizabeth. So listening to everybody's comments has really helped kind of reshape what I wanted to say. Um, I was the chair of the board at the time you were hired. And um, the moment you were hired, I handed that role off to Susanna and I felt like, oh gosh, We've just hired this person who I think is really wonderful, but I'm never going to have any access to her anymore because um, a lot of times, you know, the chair has a, has a lot more access. And the truth of the matter is you were open to all of us. You were open to everybody. And um, I got the privilege of being in central office so many times to see you, oh, you know, you were sitting down to have lunch that has been noted many times, but I just don't think people can understand how you built community and trust and relationship together with, with those wonderful people. And I was invited in, like, I just happened to be dropping by. I was, I was you know, signing something or doing something. Join us, come have lunch. Or there was a birthday party and, and someone had gotten special donuts and come have some, these are great donuts. You've got to come in here. And, and just the welcoming um, aspect of your personality, again, to, to kind of go back to what Cindy said, you were what we needed. You were a relationship builder and, and brought us all together. And it, it wasn't just that, you know, that single aspect of you. Kathy talked about your spine of steel, your heart of gold. Like you were the package, you were everything. And it is exactly what we needed. Um, I know that you've had to be superintendent through a lot of difficult times, but I'd like to call out the fact that um, you, you're not just a leader in a crisis. You came in with a, with a great vision. You helped this town shape with a future search. You were careful and thoughtful and diligent to help us develop our strategic plan and put us on a path that somehow has been able to survive these crises and difficulties because it was so thoughtfully done. And um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is just that, so the superintendent has this big picture view. It, it seems like the superintendent isn't involved in a personal way, but I know for a fact, hearing from everybody tonight and in my own life, you are involved in a personal way with people, with students, with families with this community and um, we're really going to miss you. So thank you so much. Thank you, Elizabeth. I will miss you all as well. And if I weren't so old, I would stay for many years, but <laughs> I have to go be with my family now. <laughs> and you should. No, I feel like I feel like I'm graduating here with the all everybody's the top of the, the class. So um, I've, I've just so appreciated working with you all and um, to my fellow graduating class of retirees, um, you're just, you're the best. It's just amazing to see you all here and know what wonderful people you are. So thank you for the opportunity to come and work in Cape Elizabeth. I really appreciate it. And like I said, if I was younger, I would definitely stay because I have enjoyed it, even though it's been challenging. But um, the administrative team has been just amazing to work with. I've formed friendships and um, 
we've made some tough decisions together and we've talked out a lot of things. We haven't always agreed, but um, we've managed to come through at United. So I thank you everyone. Thank you for your kind words. And, and now we should move on to the COVID update. <laughs> you ready for your final COVID update? <laughs> yeah, we need to applaud you first. Thank you. All right, so do you want to move on to the COVID update? I think we're ready. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Phew. Um, so students and staff have settled into the new four day a week schedule following the ever changing uh, Maine Department of Education guidelines. Masks are no longer required on the playground. However, students and staff are still subject to contact tracing requirements if there is a positive case. So just so everybody knows that. The administrative team has been working hard now on plans for the fall um, of 2021 reopening of school. And you did get that plan in your packet today um, in the supporting documents, but I thought I would just go over it um, to remind you if you didn't have a chance to look at it. So the following plan is recommended by the administrative team of the Cape Elizabeth School Department. On September 1st, 2021, school opened for all grades one through 12 students, according to the Cape Elizabeth School Board adopted school calendar. And the first day for kindergarten students will be on September 8th. And between September 1st and September 8th, um, there will be kindergarten screening for with the kindergarten teachers and the kindergarten students. In-person learning will be provided for all students five days a week, Monday through Friday. All students will participate in in-school learning and there will be no remote learning program or hybrid program option for students. Schools will return to regular pre-COVID schedules and parents will be notified regarding transportation schedules. All and Maine Department of Education requirements for school opening will be adhered to, including mask wearing and social distancing, if those are still required. To adhere to social distancing requirements on buses, it may be necessary to restrict provided transportation to K to eight, but we'll make every effort. And I, I know that we have done that so far. Um, these last few weeks, um, we'll make every effort to meet the transportation needs of our families. More information will be provided during the summer regarding specific transportation schedules. So that is um, the plan that you'll be um, voting on later. I don't know if the board has any questions about that plan. No, okay. So I just like to, um, for the conclusion of my COVID reports, um, I would like to thank our families and community members for their understanding and flexibility as we've progressed through the challenges that the, the pandemic has brought us. I'd also like to thank the Cape Elizabeth School Department School Board and administrative team for their work and support during this difficult time. And Donna, I Cindy had one quick question that oh, we missed okay, at sure. first. Yeah, I'm sorry, I do have a question about the plan. I know it's the plan is to be fully in person and without any remote learning. Is there any consideration for students who may have um, medical circumstances or, or other needs that prevent them from being able to attend in person? Uh, yes, and those decisions would be made either in a 504 or IEP meeting. So yes, of course, um, you know, we, as Dell says, we need to meet the needs of our students. So um, yes. Thank you. Uh, on an individual basis. So. Uh, so heading on to principals, uh, Let's see, Jason, would you like to start for Fun Cove? Yes, I, I would. Thank you, Heather. And I'll keep it brief, but happy to answer any questions um, if you'd like to know more. So, um, you know, we're really focusing on um, closing out the year and beginning to plan for the next, as always. But um, it's a bit more challenging this year. Um, but I think we're doing a great job. We're working, the, you know, the three schools are really in communication and working together and all the departments are working together to try to um, answer questions that are perhaps unknowns about next year. So 
In terms of closing out the year, we're working on student placement, uh, we're creating new schedules, uh, we're, we're, plan, we're having a plan A and plan B. So we're, we have a plan for three foot distancing in the classrooms and six foot distancing for eating, assuming that we will at least start that way. Um, not certain of that, but we have a plan B. So, you know, basically um, plan A with three foot distance learning and six foot eating will look a lot like it does right now, um, but five days a week instead of four. So we're quite confident, um, we're very confident in um, having a successful start to the school year, um, having been open for a few weeks now um, and practice and, and been tweaking things. We feel really good about uh, starting off in the fall. If things should change, or um, or you know things guidelines change within the first few months of school, uh, we, would, we would be able to eat lunch, eat snack in classrooms again and fit more students in the cafeteria. Uh, but that's really and and other than transportation, you know there are issues there potentially if we face guidelines that stay the same, but um, we really know what we're doing now. We're quite confident. So that's a good feeling. Um, and so, you know, other than that, it's, it's the typical end of year stuff. We have a lot of hiring going on at Pond Co, which is another um, in time intensive uh, layer. We have six uh, hiring committees operating right now. Um, so that's taking a lot of uh, time and effort from staff, but it's some of the, it's the most important work, some of the most important work we do, because we know that um, the time and energy we put into hiring um, will have just such a positive impact on our students uh, that we're going to give it everything we have, regardless of how busy we are right now. Um, but I, you know, I thank the board for your support this year. Um, it's been a challenging year, but a great one, and, and we're excited about the fall. I don't know if anyone has any questions or wants to know anything specific. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Troy. Um, yeah, so pretty much like Jason, um, you know, we have plan A and B kind of to go back to school in the fall, depending on what restrictions we have and what guidelines we have to follow, but um, we're excited. There's a lot of stuff happening. It seems like the end of the year has all kind of just come upon us really quickly. Every year, there's kind of the same routines we go through with, you know, schedules and transitions and all and hiring and all these things, but it just feels kind of like it's come a little quicker. Um, I think that for us, we're excited. Oh, you know, a quick update. We have our second vaccination clinic on Friday, which um, the first time around was quite a celebration. Um, if you've ever worked with Jill Young, you know that everything is uh, like is thought out very well. Um, she had confetti for kids that you know after they had their picture the first time, and I think we're still sweeping the confetti out of the school, but it was there. She's like, "Oops!" Afterwards, I know she knew it, but it was perfect. Um, and the, and the group of people that came and ran that clinic were so excited. They're like, "This is incredible! It's the we've never seen anything like this. Just the celebration." So, um, looking forward to that again on Friday. <laughs> We, this is also a time of year where we have to work closely, as Jason said, with the other buildings and all the departments. Um, our technology team is gonna be kind of hard at work as we try to gather all the parts and pieces that have been out on loan um, to students and families during this whole last year and a half and, and to try to match it all up and to make sure that it's all there and working. So we're starting our laptop and iPad collections um, Thursday, Friday, and a little bit of Monday for our remote kids. So there's a lot of, of that kind of stuff happening. Um, next year's schedule, we are pretty well into that. We are it's trying real. to thoughtfully schedule um, next year so that cohorting, I hope that we don't need to do that, but in the case that we do, we'll be prepared for it um, more so than what we've been in the past. Um, so some of those types of changes we are making kind of trying to be forward thinking. Um, other than that, we do have our eighth grade promotion, which is parent designed, and, and we have a great group of parents that have been working on that. That'll be on the 15th. I think it's going to go about from 9 to 11 and um, end up on Hannaford Field and, and using that space outside. So we're excited about all of those, those events that are happening. We had a great yearbook this year that was we were able to kind of get together for kids. So We've tried hard to, and I think wrap up this year as though it's more of a typical year. 
Um, and I think we've been able to successfully do that. And then lastly, for Donna, I would just say, um, I didn't speak up with the whole other group, but I remember being on the hiring committee for Donna and making the statement, all I really wanna do is hire somebody that can inspire me and keep me out of jail. Um, <laughs> and so that was, that was we've been good at that. I, I think, you know, the middle school is a place where you should be encouraged to take risks and try new things. Um, and sometimes it's a scary when you're the, the boss that has to answer the phone calls. So I appreciate, you know, that level of support. And you also have to be the person that can pump the brakes and, you know, people can call and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. I need you to tell me why I shouldn't do this and, and tell me that it's just my competitive nature right now, not common sense. So um, I think having those skills has been helpful and I appreciate that from Donna and I, and I thank you for that very much. So. Um, Thanks, Troy. All right, that's it. Any questions for me? Thanks. Chef. All right. Um, yes. I, wanted, I wanted to talk about project graduation, um, which happens Sunday night after graduation from 5.30 until 1.30 in the morning. Um, and I want to mention it, I don't usually take the time to, to go through some details, but it was particularly a challenging one to, to, to organize for the parents who organize everything about project graduation. Um, I do some communication, but it's all parent driven and parent organized. Um, and it's never on school grounds. And the reason it's never on school grounds is because the purpose is to take kids away from school grounds and away from the community. So we can be confident that they will be safe. So there were a lot of changes that had to be made, but it had to be brought onto school grounds. And I wanted to mention three parents in particular who were at the heart of organizing project graduation and just organized an event that kept kids so engaged that there was really very little temptation for any more than just a tiny handful of kids to leave early because they were truly exhausted. Um, and those three parents are Heather Mullen and Stephanie Manning and Heather Garrity. Um, they put in countless hours, adapted their plan multiple times um, to changing guidelines, and they were an absolute pleasure to work with. Um, I also want to thank the students um, who were wonderful throughout the entire event. Um, they were respectful, they had fun, they came into project graduation with a great attitude. Um, and they left with a great attitude. I want to mention three teachers, David Shields, Andy Strout, and Ben Raymond, who volunteered to work um, and re reenact fourth grade field day for the graduating seniors um, from 12 o'clock midnight until one o'clock on Hannaford Field. And it was a blast to watch them just act so goofy. Um, and childlike and just have an incredible amount of fun. And then I want to also briefly just thank every single parent who understood and didn't complain, at least to me, they might have complained at home about having to pick their kids up from the high school at 1.30 in the morning uh, because we didn't allow any carpooling and it was just an investment in safety. And I at least heard absolutely no complaints and the pickup process just happened wonderfully. And then I just want to echo and just briefly add uh, my comments about Donna. I will say I've been here a long time. I will say that in the three years that Donna has been here, um, there were a disproportionately large number of really difficult decisions and really difficult situations. And Donna was nothing but consistently supportive. And it made a huge difference for me as principal. So thank you for that. Thanks, Jeff. So Jeff, a little note about the 130 pickup. There's no complaint because it's easy when you just designate the spouse. It's your responsibility. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> it was a huge success as a son who participated. I hear trivia was phenomenal as well. People enjoyed that. But the Mr. Shields and that was really fun in fourth grade. I have to jump oh, no, I, and say I love I, that they did that and I hope they did delicious bass. I don't know why all the kids like delicious bass. It's just a fake fish, but <laughs> so awesome that they did field day. Yeah. Go ahead, Phil. 
just very briefly, I didn't get an opportunity earlier, but um, I told this to Jeff, but I, although I don't know Jeff very well, uh, personally, I've really enjoyed him over the last couple of years, but he did co teach a class with my father-in-law when he used to be the principal in Morris High School. And um, when my father-in-law, Brian Hatch, was the assistant principal, he was a former English teacher, and he always talked about that class. It was a, it was a co, like U.S. history English class. They co-taught as principal and vice principal. And, um, and he wanted me to just pass this wrote very brief uh, sentence. He just said, he was the best, a brilliant, gifted teacher, tremendous principal, but most importantly, a gr great person of character and integrity. Cape was so fortunate to have him. I'm not sure I said, and uh, happy retirement. Thank you, Phil. Wow. <laughs> So next up is Marcy. There oh, you are. I am. Okay. Um, for our school revolving renovation fund projects, two contractors will complete our remaining five projects by July 31st. This includes three emergency eyewash stations, the metal shop at the high school, and the roof reinforcement project at the high school. <laughs> we, we have started the preliminary audit work for this current fiscal year and our auditors arrive next week to begin the audit and they will return again in August. So this summer we will focus on our year end closing as well as completing all of the audit requirements. Monday night, the town council will consider for approval the new policy of providing the short-term financing option to us, such as for instance, our big um, $300,000 bond for the concept design. If they approve this policy, then the town finance director can proceed with the details that we need for our bond anticipated note in the amount of 300,000. In the meantime, Colby Company and Scott Simons have been, have been preparing the plan for the concept design and community engagement, and they will be ready to go. So this plan will ultimately save us having to pay bond issue costs in the market. We have our final projects being completed that were results of our COVID relief grants. The ventilation disinfection system is complete in all three schools. We are now just waiting on the replacement of the wood shop dust collector. And this takes place on June 28th. And then we are finished with our entire $600,000 project that was grant funded. Another grant funded project is a technology project at Pond Cove, which involves 45 new projectors and whiteboards for the classrooms, all purchased with our grant money. This installation process will begin as soon as school is out for the summer, and it will take until the first week of July to complete. The COVID relief grants have also paid for the rental of tents at the schools, three portable classrooms that will be in installed this summer for the new school year, and new furniture to accommodate spacing requirements for all students. The American Rescue Plan allocation we will receive will pay a large portion of the portable classrooms plus $14,266 for each school that is intended to support students who have been impacted the most by the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a learning recovery effort. So now each school administrator is making a plan for the learning recovery needed. The funds are available through September 23 and one year longer if reapproved. And um, this summer, Don, I've mentioned to Donna, I will be researching to um, look into the possibility of getting further help with our portables with a state grant for leasing and rental of portables. And now for our financial report for the month, and I'm almost finished. For the monthly financial report, the percentage of the year that has occurred as of May 31st was 92% of the year. We're almost there. The total general fund expenditures were 85% as of May 31st. The average percentage spent for the last five years at this point in time was 87%. So we are just under the average for the last five years. The mean average for the forecasting trend this year has been a five point range, the average for every month. This past month, the point range between the actual and the forecast was seven points. This range will be less over this next month based on our year end expenses that I know are out there. And um, I will be working this summer to get a good look at what we might expect for our audited year end balance. I think that's it for tonight. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you.
Next we have Kathy as our Director of Teaching and Learning. Hello again, everyone. Hi. I just have a couple of uh, brief updates. Um, the first um, is around DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. The DEI Task Force um, held its last meeting of the school year on May 26th, and the woman, Joe Prasad, who is going to be conducting our equity audit, was able to attend and begin the process of information gathering. And tomorrow, she's going to be meeting with a group of high school students to continue that process. And then, in addition, all of the policies um, that did not have gender neutral language um, have been revised to incorporate gender neutral language. And as of this afternoon, and Jen's very um, diligent efforts, um, they've all been uploaded to the website. In uh, terms of professional development, we received 53 proposals for summer work centered on our two goals, promoting students' academic and social emotional learning and improving equity and inclusion. Uh, we're really grateful for this, uh, for this expression of commitment to curriculum and instruction, and educators will be notified um, as to how many hours were approved on Friday. And then finally, um, because this is my last time speaking to you all, I really just wanted to thank you so much for the gift of, of five years I have been working in this community, and um, wish I could name every every person um, who's been influential. Because um, well, it would be every person in this district. Um, so, so thank you. I wish you all the best moving forward. Kathy, thank you for that. Um, I lost my train of thought because I um, I will deeply miss you. I think um, you have been a role model to to me at least um, in how to move forward with integrity. You have tackled the DEI head on um, and made it move forward in the way that it needed to be. Your commitment to professional development. Um, and carving out time in the calendar to make sure that that is provided has been amazing. Um, you are so intelligent, you are so wise, you have so much to offer, um, and you have such a big heart that cares so much. And um, I'm glad that you are taking this time to work on your doctorate. Um, it's such a huge accomplishment. Uh, and I just wish you the well, the best. And wherever you land someday as a superintendent, hopefully after that, um, they will be so, so, so very lucky to have you. Um, and so thank you for all of that. You will be deeply missed by many. Um, thank you so much. Are there any questions or comments for Kathy? All right, moving on, uh, we have Dell, Director of Special Services. Thank you, Heather. Um, I just wanna focus on, uh, well, what we're focused on in special ed right now is uh, preparing for summer. And that includes extended school year for our students, um, as well as we're most likely be doing some assessments this summer as well as the teams are still working on getting caught up on assessments. Um, I, um, the ESY or extended school year is planned to be in person. And I do wanna thank Marcy for uh, finding a way to um, make sure that there's a tent available um, so that we can have an outdoor classroom uh, at least some of the time. And um, ESY will most likely be taking place in two buildings this year. The, the high school program will be down at the high school in room 202. Um, but the uh, Pond Cove middle school students will be at the middle school. Um, we are at the middle school because uh, we try to attach to the rec program because many of our students transition back and forth from the rec program. Um, I do want to, if the board would indulge me, to just uh, say a couple things to both Donna and Kathy, who um, are in the offices on both sides of me and are on their way out. Donna, I uh, just want to thank you for your leadership. Uh, the words that came up several times from folks was uh, uh, a lot of grace and gracious. And I have said that to you uh, recently. And the best example is 
how gracious you have been with regard to the transitions of the new folks that are coming in and to ensure that their voices are being heard and that they're part of the process of new hires. And for the, those of us that are going to uh, remain at CAPE, we certainly appreciate your investment and dedication to that process and in making sure that um, things are the way they should be as you go, as you leave. Kathy, um, I've learned a lot from you as well. I know that I, I bug you quite a bit, um, but um, I uh, have really uh, grown to uh, enjoy the friendship that we developed. And we have a lot of great conversations. We don't always agree and that's okay. Um, and I'll miss you greatly and hopefully we can keep in touch. And does anyone have any questions with regard to special education? Thank you, Dal. Uh, Donna, moving on to your report. So I will start my report by reporting that the budget passed. Woo -hoo. Oh, um, I've been checking. Me Good. too, I've been checking. <laughs> well, I asked Deb Lane to text, text me. Um, Yay! It was, the vote was 294 yes, uh, 145 no. So she says, have a good night. So <laughs> it's very good news. Um, so as you know, we've been doing uh, quite a bit of interviewing and throughout the interviewing process, we have learned a few things um, about that Im really impacted job descriptions and titles. And you're going to be addressing those um, in a, a few minutes. So the first um, change that we are proposing was discovered during interviews for the position of Director of Facilities and Transportation. And Chris Record and Matt were involved um, on the interview committees as, as well as um, some staff members. But it became apparent that splitting the Director of Facilities and Transportation uh, would reduce the unattainable challenges of trying to fulfill the many responsibilities of both departments. So we already have a very competent transportation supervisor, Chris Storr, and we agreed that changing his title to director of transportation made sense. And then changing the open position to director of facilities um, made sense. And through the interview process, um, we selected uh, David Bagdasarian uh, for that position. So we, we, um, we determined that really this that would be the best option for both the town and the district. So um, while Chris's, um, Chris's position is the change of title, David is um, moving into a, a new position. So, um, and, and we will now be interviewing for the assistant director of facilities. Uh, so it's just the domino effect. Um, the job description for the director of transportation will be similar to that of the transportation supervisor, but there'll be a few minor changes and um, that will be worked on this summer and presented to the board for approval in the fall. Uh, the second discovery, and maybe um, Cindy, you might want to talk a bit about this as well. The second discovery was that we made was in uh, the advertising and posting for the position of Director of Educational Technology. And the job description that we developed and that you all um, adopted uh, required a master's degree in technology as uh, in a related field or related field, as well as certification as a building administrator. And we found that um, in this really, these two very stringent qualifications really limited our field of candidates. So um, Chris worked with the uh, interviewing team and the technology team and came up with a revised job description that is going before you tonight. And it's really taking the same qualifications, but instead of requiring them, it's preferring them. Um, so that this might open, uh, open us to a larger pool of applicants. And we would be inter uh, advertising for that position uh, later this week. So two changes, um, but I, good changes. So, any questions? Yes. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. Um, moving on, may I have a motion? I move we approve the following coaching nominations for fall 2021 as set out in our agenda. May I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Uh, thank you to everybody who's willing to do this. These um, coaching positions are, are so important to our student athletes. It's another connection for them and an opportunity for them. So thank you. Okay. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr is had to step away. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Boltz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the superintendent's nominations of personnel to second year probationary contracts. Um, John Forsyth and Joe Wagner. Second. May I have a second? Uh, Elizabeth, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr, again, had to step away. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Boltz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve Lance Bellinger for the middle school PE teacher position. I have a second. Second. Any questions or comments? Okay, Heather Altmer, yay. Kimberly Carr, not here. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Bowles. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Great. Can I have a motion, please? I move we change the title of transportation supervisor to director of transportation. I have a second. Second. Uh, any more? Donna spoke to this. Uh, any more questions or comments beyond the explanation that Donna gave? Just to thank you to Donna and everybody for. Um, making these necessary changes and doing the work to, to look at everything and make sure that we're getting it right and getting the right people. I was gonna say something similar that I think this is a really positive, strong move in the right direction. Um, so thank you for taking this opportunity to make that shift. Any other comments? Heather Altenberg, yay. Uh, Kimberly yeah. Carr not here. Oh, did somebody have a comment? Nope. Okay, uh, Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve David Bagdazarian for the director of facilities position. May I have a second? Second. Any questions or, or comments? Okay, hey, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr not here, Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Bolts. Yay. Jan McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve Michelle McClellan for the assistant superintendent position. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jen. Um, so I would like to welcome Michelle. Um, she's actually here in our audience as an attendee. Uh, and I just want to let her know that we are excited to have her come to, to be a part of this um, district to keep moving the work forward that um, has been happening. Um, and I know that upcoming uh, superintendent, uh, Chris Record is here as well. Um, if either of you would like to speak for a moment, you could raise your hand. I see Chris there. Um, 
Um, and I've just given you permission to talk. Go ahead, Chris. Thanks, Heather. Uh, what an evening uh, to listen in to just the kind words you said about everyone. So it's been a privilege to listen in. And I just want to say congrats to the retirees and Kathy and uh, the class of 2021. So uh, I do want to uh, just say, Dell, you're, you're spot on. Uh, Don and Kathy have been so gracious with the, the transitions. Thank you. Um, in terms of Michelle, I'm thrilled. Uh, we had uh, a deep pool of candidates, highly qualified people. Um, thank you for all the people that took part in, in the hiring process. Uh, Michelle comes with uh, Tremendous experience as an assistant superintendent in Auburn. Uh, she's been an elementary principal, uh, a teacher, um, and just has a vast array of experience across the board. And I think she's going to be an excellent partner for me uh, in leading Cape Elizabeth forward. Um, so I'm really excited to have her, uh, and uh, I look forward to working with Michelle. So thank you for having me tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Michelle, you have your hand raised, you should be able to speak at this point. Great, thank you so much, uh, Chair Altenberg. Uh, wow, what, an, what a night to listen in on and, and just get reinforcement that uh, Cape Elizabeth School District is such an outstanding educational community and so committed uh, to giving the students the best educational opportunity uh, that, that they can through hiring fabulous people. So it, it really has been a pleasure tonight to, to listen in on this and that you take time to honor each person to the extent that you do. Um, again, speaks really volumes about the culture um, that I've already come to know through the interview process is just stellar and outstanding. So, uh, and it's also a, just to reiterate what you've said over and over apparent that the district leadership, Donna, Kathy, Dell, Marcy, et cetera, um, have just been moving this district in a wonderful direction that really aligns with your goals as a board and your vision as a board um, and, and obviously reflects what the community wants for their students. So I am eager, very eager to join you um, in, that, in that effort and um, I can't wait to start. Uh, so thank you again and I look forward to meeting all of you in person someday, someday soon. Thank you. So ready to vote. Heather Altmerg is a yay. Kimberly Carr not here. Excuse me, Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Jan McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Thank you and welcome aboard. May I have a motion please? I move we grant the superintendent of schools authority to hire school personnel, excluding administrative positions, which will require board approval during the summer. May I have a second? Second. Great. And so this is a typical authority that we give to the superintendent over the summer. This is nothing unusual. Um, are there any other questions or comments regarding that? Okay, Heather Altmerg, yay. Uh, Kimberly Carr, not here. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. And the motion. I move we approve the fall return to school plan. May I have a second. So this was, uh, spoken about by uh, Donna earlier in the night. The information is, the more detailed information is in our packets. Are there any other questions or comments? I think it's exciting that we're talking about going back to school five days a week with this plan. So I am just gonna say hip hip hooray. Um, <laughs> Heather Altenberg is a yay. Uh, Kimberly Carr not here. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Bolts. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Ah, yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Great. May I have a motion, please? 
I move we approve a two year leave of absence from September 2021 to June 2023 for Jonathan Warner under the Educational Interchange Program for MLTI. May I have a second? Second. Uh, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr is not here. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. I have a motion. I move we reschedule Laura Briggs sabbatical to September 2021 for first semester and, oh my gosh, um, unpaid leave for second semester. Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Laura. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Not here. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the new language in the job description for the Director of Educational Technology. May I have a second? Second. So um, Cindy, can you just reiterate what the shift in dis uh, description is? There's one word I think that's... Yes, there hard. were um, four specific qualifications that we changed from required to preferred. And those were a master's degree in educational technology, a main DOE certification as an assistant building administrator or higher, uh, successful experience as a technology director or similar position, and successful experience as a classroom teacher. And in the original description, those all said required, and we've changed all of those to preferred. And then um, in the administration and organizational management section, we had um, some minor uh, modifications to um, include collaboration with the town technical director in some areas. And we added one line regarding um, security best practices and adhering to applicable laws and requirements. Thank and those you. are all um, underlined in the copy of the job description that's in your packet. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments about it? Okay, Heather Altmerg, yay. Kimberly Connor, not here. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the affirmative action plan. May I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? It's, this is the second reading. Um, as the, the board can see, this is something that we need to have legally and it um, pretty well covers, you know, everything in our practice needs to um, be with an eye to non-discrimination. Um, and it, it's a very extensive, long document. It talks about everything, <laughs> literally everything from, you know, hiring practices to goals, to procedures, to the um, periodic review we need to be doing of this. And the one thing that I want to say out loud so that someone remembers to do this, this plan requires that actual names of people are put into it, not just positions. And so as we are having certain people turning over, we need to make sure we go back to this document, perhaps even within a month. And um, we need to take certain names out because we will have a new affirmative action officer, Title IX coordinator, and that will need to be updated in this document and on the website. So saying it out loud, hopefully someone remembers, make a note of it somewhere. All right, any questions or comments beyond that? Great. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr, not here. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. Laura Danino. Yay. Okay. Elizabeth, 
you're up. All right. So first up, we have a first reading for the immunization of students and communicable diseases. This policy was brought to us for a first read update um, by our school nurses, and they're just legal updates. Um, there's, you know, periodically there are changes in statute, and so it's it's just around that. Um, Jen McVeigh made a quick note before the meeting, just wanting to clarify around um, the exemption for students with established IEPs. And her question, and I don't know if we know this or we need to ask someone else, um, is when IEP is defined, um, a lot of us kind of have the older language, which is individualized education plan, but her understanding, because she works in special ed, is that it is individualized education program. And so we just wanna make sure that we have our language correct. So if we can just double check on that before we bring it back to policy and then a second read, I wanted to give Jen a shout out for that. But it does refer to um, an exemption for students who have already established IEPs. Great. Um, okay, no questions about that one. Um, moving on to recruiting and hiring of administrative staff. This is a required policy. And I don't believe we had it and we need to have it. So um, we are bringing this to the board tonight. And um, it is it just says that we're complying with the law that we will follow our affirmative action plan when we're hiring. And it's a fairly short policy. And then you move on to the um, procedure. And we made sure to make a note that when it says when um, hiring administrative staff, a lot of people think of administrative assistants. So we wanted to make sure that people understood that we're talking about um, principals and directors, administrators. Um, and so it just, it goes, it spells out the, the process that we should be following. And luckily, as I read through here, this is what we've been doing. So that feels really good. Um, but we need to have this um, in policy and um, so that's why we have it. And then the last one is chemical hazard plan. And this just gets a periodic review about the different chemicals um, that we have on campus. We had a, a pretty long talk from Doug Wordley a couple years ago about his um, sort of tender care and keeping of all the, the chemicals in the high school and that sort of thing. So. Um, Kathy, can you remind me, is that a plan that has, is moving into the plan folder or is that a plan that is coded by um, Drummond and so we're going to keep it in policy? I remember being, not remembering. I believe we put it, I'd have to double check, but I believe we put it in the plan folder. I think so too. I just, there, there's something that is called the plan, but we have to keep it in procedure. I just want to make sure. But I think anytime something is called the plan, we should probably make sure that it's also in plans. Indeed. So um, everybody can have a peek at those. We'll um, have a policy committee probably in late August to make sure we can bring everything back to the board that um, different people in the school department need and get it on the agenda for the uh, September business meeting. Thank you, Elizabeth. Are there any questions? Okay, are there any other uh, school board agenda requests? And then committee reports, uh, Sydney Paz. Um, yeah, the Paz committee met on May 13th. Um, they discussed um, some op uh, opportunities they have for students this summer and even past students um, for taking certification tests. Um, after the fact. So I guess currently there are some students who due to the remote learning or other situations uh, that have attended PASS in the past year or two that weren't able to take certification exams right at the end of school. So they are finding options to support those students who may have actually already, you know, be out and, and working, um, but still need to take a certification exam. So they were offering a program for that this summer. And they also mentioned that they are still recruiting for the 2021-22 school year. Uh, they do plan to be in session five days a week. 
um, they still have openings and they have extended their visitation opportunities through September 2021 to hopefully um, be able to recruit more students for the fall. So that's, Thank you. That's what I have. Elizabeth, any more on policy? Um, I will be um, chatting with our new superintendent and um, the current policy committee about um, putting a policy meeting on the books for late August. So that's a TBD. Thank you so much. Um, and DEI, uh, uh, Kathy already spoke to that in her report. The last meeting uh, we had Joe Prasad, who is doing the equity audit. It was an info gathering session. Um, and so that's where we were with that. Uh, there's no DEI meetings happening throughout the summer that are official. And just as a reminder, it's going um, being the task force piece of it is being taken away. And we have decided and voted as the board to make it um, an official committee that's longstanding and, and deserves our attention for the long term. Technology, Cindy. No technology committee meetings. The, the focus really has been on hiring for the new director position. And a lot of the technology committee team members are involved in the hiring for that position, but there hasn't been any other meetings this week. Okay, thank you. Um, and then finance, Phil. I think um, no up, no up. Donna it's stole good, your thunder. Good news. Yeah, good news from Donna and from the town. And thank you to the voters for supporting the budget. Yeah. Thank you for everyone who went out and uh, voted. And yes, thank you for everybody who supported the budget. Um, we're about to adjourn or have that motion. Uh, again, I would like to say uh, this was a little bit of a longer meeting, um, but I think it was well worth it to take the time to honor those who have given so much to this district. Um, and I just wanna thank you all again for the heart and soul, the effort, the work, the, um, the commitment that you've shown, the laughter that you've brought um, over the years, the joy that you have uh, given others in just being here and being a part of it. I wish everyone good luck. Um, as you move on to your next adventures, whatever they are, those who are leaving the district, and thank you again. So may I have a motion? I move we adjourn. May I have a second? Second. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr not here. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Cindy Volz. Yay. Jen McVeigh. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you.